The presenting sponsor for On Education is Classcraft. We're excited to announce Classcraft's new story mode, which makes it easy for educators to harness the power of stories. Episodes 1 and 2 of Season 1 are ready for you and your students to play today, and it's completely free. To learn more about Classcraft and the new story mode, simply visit classcraft.com slash oneducation. People are into the talk about eye twitches and video games. <laughs> yes. Welcome to On Education, part of the Education Podcast Network. I'm Mike Washburn. And I'm Glenn Irvin. Friends, we have an awesome pod for you today. We will discuss the implications of Sphero buying little bits and which educational robot companies are creating the best products for our students. A conversation came up on Twitter, and we wanted to dive right into it here on the show. We're going to share why we are so passionate about this podcast and what some of our goals are. And our guest this week is the Chief Innovation and Information Officer for District Administration Magazine and co-chair of the FATC Program Committee, Lenny Shad. So I was telling you earlier today, yeah, by text message, that my left eye, I'm so tired that my left eye is twitching. <laughs> And I'm having so a hard time dealing. <laughs> I'm having a hard time dealing with it. It's been doing it constantly, mm. and it's messing me up. Um, let me tell you where I've been. Okay. I've been in British Columbia. Okay. In Kelowna, BC, which is beautiful. It's surrounded by mountains. It, think about, like you know how when you're we were in San Diego, yeah. and in San Diego, like. Everywhere you look has like really tall hills. They're not mountains, but they're huge hills with sure. houses all around them. It's exactly like that in Kelowna. Mm. It's absolutely gorgeous. So in the middle of summer in Kelowna, if you're familiar with the term, the Okanagans, I mean, most Canadians would know what that is, but the Okanagans are a, um, an area of British Columbia that's absolutely beautiful. And so that's where I was. So I was in British Columbia, three hours time difference. And then I flew home. I did a workshop and then I flew home. Uh, I was home for about eight hours. And then I flew again to Thunder Bay, hmm. which is in northern Ontario. Also beautiful. Um, and I did a workshop there. And I so I've been home for about 24 hours now. Yeah. But I did a workshop this morning in Peterborough, which is a two-hour drive. So I drove two hours to talk for 45 minutes and then I drove home today. Jeez. So, so you're jet lagged and travel lagged. I'm I need <laughs> and I have to go to the office tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty done. Like yeah. I, I could use some quality time with my couch. Yes. Um <laughs> and I'm I'm kind of counting on that um the next little while. But we're a lot of people are are back. Cheryl is back getting her classrooms ready and you're back at school doing doing pd and all the cool stuff that you do right yes um you're super excited about this year i mean my wife actually we walked into the school together and we started laughing because we we're like oh how many times have we done this right exactly. um, just a different a different school different setting and yeah. uh, very excited uh, about the school year uh, i i'm i was just blown away by the leadership specifically at, at my school, but leadership throughout schools. I think leaders don't get that much credit, uh, our principals and our administrators and the job that they have to do to be able to put on these professional development days so that they're actually effective and they get the right information to us, mm -hmm. the key information, the vital things, but not overwhelm us. And we always feel like we're overwhelmed because we kind of are, you know, where there's a lot mm -hmm. of information mm -hmm. to take in, but all of the procedures, the policies, the things that have to be taken care of, uh, and then still be able to go ahead and have that feeling of like this welcoming feeling. And that's exactly what was created at our school. And I was super excited about that. Uh, we were back today and we're back th this entire week. We have a uh, open house tomorrow night. So really excited. And then next week, this is when the action begins. We get the kids, and, and so we're we're very excited of about getting the year started. It's 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 tough to remember, but like a high school is a giant organization. Yes, like there are potentially hundreds of teachers. Yep, and staff. And 
uh, you know, a principal and how many vice principals do you guys have? We have two vice principals and a principal. We have a, about a hundred teachers in our school. So it's a, it's a massive organization. Yes. Tons of work involved in getting a school ready for the school year, man. Big time. And, uh, you know, hats off to all the, all the principals. And we have lots of principals and vice principals that are listening to the show and hats off to all you. You guys are doing uh, an amazing job. Yes. Just absolutely crushing it right now. Uh, it's a lot of work right now, getting things together so that you have a great year. And, 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 you know, for the teachers out there that are, you know, him and Han over the PD Mm -hmm. and whatever. I mean, the, the, just please, you know, regardless (laughs) of anything, just remember that, it's a lot of work. It is. And and like everyone's just trying to do a job and it's hard. Yeah. So um, you know, I, I'm I'm excited about the school year. We got lots of things going on. I'm not gonna be in a class I'm not starting in September for the first time in a while. In yes. eight years, seven years, eight years, I guess. Um, not starting a school year in September. Uh so it's gonna be a little bit odd. But we are pumped about the things that i'm doing and that we're doing and uh it's going to be it's going to be an amazing school year i'm really excited about the year um speaking about things i'm excited about hey did you ever play world of warcraft i did yes i How did much, like like seriously like seriously this is the, okay is the this the world of warcraft where you could connect your LAN computers. Basically, you'd bring your computers and connect them into a local area network and then no, be no, able to no, play against each other? Or this is not Warcraft. This? That's Warcraft. Okay, okay. Yeah. So World, World of Warcraft, Warcraft is the is original the role-playing kind of game. Okay, yeah, so I did Warcraft, not play that. Warcraft no. is like the single-player RPG, but you could put your players together. It's like StarCraft, right? Okay. But, but, but orcs and humans and whatever the yes. story yes but world, world of, warcraft of warcraft was the mmo okay like the the online game okay you never played never the played that game. one nope oh, okay so i mean there's a lot of people i know for sure a lot of people listening that have played world of warcraft yes um so <laughs> i mean because it's it's a it was a it's a staple in gaming it came out in 2004 and it's been going strong i mean it ebbs and flows a little bit but it's never not been the number one MMO in the world, uh, you know, since it came out basically. And, um, about a year and a half ago, they announced they were re-releasing the kind of 1.0 version Hmm. of world of Warcraft as what they called world of Warcraft classic. So, so one of the major complaints about world of Warcraft is that it's been dumbed down. It's made, it's been made a lot easier. Um, you know, and and it's it's kind of like smashing your head against the keyboard, and you'll still beat the boss kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so they they re released it as World of Warcraft Classic. It came out on Monday, um, the twenty sixth, and uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, for especially for people who played like I played WoW in two thousand and four. I was there the day the servers opened. Um, and so I kind of remember what it was like back then and it is like that, um, which isn't necessarily good. Uh, (laughs) um, I mean, the funny thing is, is that people have these weird, it's a very funny case study in like memory. Yeah. Right. And what people think they remember versus what actually was going on. Yeah. So the nostalgia it's probably a lot better than what the reality was. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so, like, in World of Warcraft retail, like, the current, like, the modern version of World of Warcraft, you can probably get to level 10, for example, in probably about half an hour to an hour of okay. play. In World of Warcraft Classic that just came out, I probably played... I've probably put in four or five hours since Monday. Yeah, and I'm level seven. Oh, so it's a it's a, it's a lot tougher, harder. Yes. Oh, to yeah. I've died up. twice. Wow. Which I used to like. I haven't died in WoW, like from like normal kind of just playing, in years. To be honest. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's all weird, but you know, (laughs) it's funny. The people on Twitter, especially the teachers that I've seen post about playing wow and it hearkening back to the good old days and and stuff like that. And I'm just thinking, you know, the good old days weren't necessarily that That good. good. (laughs) I'll have to check it out though. I'm interested. Yeah. I know, uh, to, to name drop our BFF, Steve Isaacs has mentioned playing, uh, playing a little bit of wow classic yeah. i'm sure he'd be terrible at it but you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he'll appreciate that <laughs> he'll laugh at that yes, that's, he'll a, love that's it. a solid joke exactly um, you know so big news this week holy crap big news this week this is like bigger than big sphero bought little bits have you used either of these yes um, Which one? So Sphero is the ball, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's the company that makes that ball, I suppose. Yeah. Um, very cool. And little bits. What would I remember it as? People that have not used it, what is it? What is it like? So, little bits are these little like modules okay. that connect together either directly or through little cords, and they do various things. So there will be modules for Wi-Fi. There'll be modules for sound. There'll be modules for lights. There'll be modules for a whole bunch of different things. And that's kind of why they're called little bits, right? Because they're these little things that connect together to do various things. It's a great product, to be honest. Yeah. And it's the leader. There's a number of other um, little bits competitors. MakeBlock makes Neuron. And there's a company called Didacubes. Um, these are both little bits competitors they're very similar if people look those up yeah um but little bits is definitely the leader in this in that this, market that that market that little that little area of and sphero robotics. was is huge right as far as a company sphero's a big company yeah. um one of the really interesting things about sphero is that they decided to do retail so um not retail in terms of like there's lots of companies that sell into retail um, we sell it, Logics Academy sells Dash and Dot at Best Buy, for example. Um, but what Sphero did was they actually licensed and made like licensed products. So the most popular of these is the BB-8. So if you remember the the Star Wars um, robot that was on a circle, that was a, a sphere that kind of rolled around. Yeah, they made it. They basically made a BB-8 Sphero mm. and sold that all over the place and. That sounds really neat, and everyone like they sold a ton of them. Yes, but it actually, from a business perspective, didn't really, you know, other than brand recognition. Uh, I, from what I hear, it actually didn't do them a whole lot of good. They they spent a lot of money on the like the brand rights yeah. for Star Wars. I mean, imagine buying like That's huge. Money's the IP just... for Star Wars yeah. is like, I mean, could you think of a more expensive intellectual property to buy into than Star Wars? Yeah. Uh, I Not right now, yeah. I don't think. So, but they did. Um, and, but, you know, from an educational, sp- pers- from an educational perspective, Sphere has always been really good. They've always been super solid devices in the classroom. Yeah, so I was thinking about going to ask you, Mike, for us that are teachers out there, and we're thinking about like you work a lot with all kinds of different robots, and you've used them mm-hmm. in classrooms. You've you've actually obviously are presenting with specific types in uh, workshops. So, what are the main kind of educational robot companies out there? Like, what do they produce? You know, kind of what are the differences between them? So, if we have someone out there that's you know that's uh, uh, going to create a makerspace or they actually want to use some of these things as far as in their classrooms themselves, sure. what would you do? So there are lots of really interesting educational robots. I've kind of got a list of what I would say are the top 10 Yeah, in my mind um, that are, that are doing awesome work uh, right now. Um, some of them I work with and deal with a lot and, but most of them, frankly, I don't. Um, Probably the best known is Wonder Workshop. So Wonder Workshop produce uh, Dash and Dot and Q. And these are the wheelhouse for Dash and Dot. Uh, For Dash is probably grade three to five. 
Dot's wheelhouse is like grade one and two, and Q is kind of like a middle school robot. Um, obviously, these are flexible, and I tell yeah. people all the time that, you know, Dash, you should totally, if you're a kindergarten teacher and you're using Dash in your classroom, you should totally keep doing that. Just because I say the wheelhouse is three to five doesn't mean you shouldn't be using them in the kindergarten classroom. You sure. totally should. Um, but Wonder Workshop is probably the most popular. Um, the largest company is probably MakeBlock, hmm. to be honest. And they're a Chinese company. Uh, but they're everywhere. Um, you can't go to any conference without seeing the MakeBlock booth. Uh, and they make uh, MBot, which is kind of a blue robot that you assemble. Um, mm. There's a screwdriver in the box and everything. And that's I love, I love that you have to put it together. It's probably one of my favorite things about the MBot. They also make Cody Rocky. They make one of those little bits competitors, Neuron. Um, and a bunch of other things. And they actually, one of the things they do in a lot of other parts of the world that they don't do so much in the U.S. and Canada is also um, they have a whole, like, maker space in a box type thing. And while I'm not a huge fan of the, here, I'm going to sell you a maker space, yeah. I am a huge fan of selling the things that would go into a maker space if the kids were interested in those things. Yes. And and one of these packages is like com metal components with screws and screwdrivers and, and little kind of pieces that all kind of form together to produce basically letting kids make their own robots. Oh, very cool. And that's that's super cool. Um, a big player in this space is Lego. Lego. I mean, Lego Lego Mindstorms is is huge, and it's kind of powered by the first Lego League, which is easily the most popular competitive environment for robotics. Yes. Um, so there's tons of Lego robotics competitions and Lego robotics clubs. Uh, you know hundreds thousands of schools and all those over are the like uh elementary and middle school right kind of like it's the yeah. it's the lead up to doing robotics that you might do at a high school when you're yeah yeah totally robotics competitions yes yeah we so have those here ones, yeah for sure so all the ones i'm mentioning are kind of like elementary or upper elementary sure um because that's where kind of so in my mind, robots are kind of the wheelhouse for elementary where you get into like computer actual like little boards in in the high school level. So things like Microbit okay. or Adafruit or uh, Arduino, obviously, or Raspberry Pi. Yes. So those are kind of the four big um, micro boards that are used heavily at the high school level. Um, MakeBlock, who I mentioned a second ago, actually make a a cool board that's a circle it's called halo code um that's that's really neat as well and it's um it can be used in kind of the middle school level and then reach all the way up to high school obviously oh and makey makey is another one of those kind I've of heard, micro that's, boards that's a real popular one on twitter is that's the one where yeah. you can connect like a banana and something and create a keyboard out of fruit or i don't know is that that what i'm talking about is that what i'm talking so about to the be right honest, you can kind of do that with all of them. Oh, but, I didn't know that. But, you know, one of the, 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 you know, I don't know how much he gets paid for it. Yeah. But but Brian yes. Aspinall has really popularized Makey Makey, and, at least on Twitter. Yes, and he has. So they should be giving him a lot of credit <laughs> for, for that stuff. I That's see all sure. kinds of crazy contraptions that you can build. It is super cool. I mean, like, yeah. interesting things that you would never think would be able to be created. Yeah. And, and they are. Uh, so yeah, that whole kit um, that Brian carries around and tweets about every once in a while is a makey 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 setup. Okay, uh, and he does workshops on that, and it's really fun to watch. I mean, I've seen him do it a dozen times, or maybe a little bit less, but like a lot. Uh, and it's and it's fun to watch. Um, obviously, Sphero is a big player. Um, so I and and Ozobot is probably the only one I haven't mentioned yet. Oh, other than my new jam. So the one you'll see me talking about a lot personally okay. is called Metatalab. Metatalab, okay. And it's a it's a K to two coding and robotics platform. So this is for little kids, like yeah. really, really little, like like five year olds, six year olds, okay. four, five, and six year olds. And it's it doesn't require devices, it doesn't require tablets, it doesn't require uh, Wi Fi, uh, and it doesn't even need the kids to be able to read to be able wow. to to use. 
so people should definitely look up Matata Labs. And hey, listen, um, shameless plug: if you're in Canada, give me a shout, and I can hook you up. Absolutely, um, because it's it's awesome. And and I it's it, I'll tell you, I don't do many sessions on robotics, like on products. Yeah, I talk about coding. I talk about why we should code. I talk about why we should use game design and stuff like that. But I don't. So I talk about pedagogy. I don't talk a lot about products yeah. specifically in my sessions, but I'm doing sessions on my Tata Labs a ton because of how awesome the, the it actually is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, l- listen this this is huge news in in our in my little world. It's like boom! It was like a huge seismic wave and i'm super interested i'm a fan of both of these products we i don't sell either of them sphero or little bits aren't in our catalog uh, at logics academy i'm just super interested in seeing you know what happens what happens next exactly because the both of these teams are awesome and doing really really cool stuff uh, i'm a fan of both of them um so i mean it's really 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 interesting um and big big news so we'll see what happens when we come back a conversation popped up on twitter it was a simple question for educational podcasters by our friend brad schreffler why do you do what you do so we're going to try to answer that question for you right here on the podcast stay with us on education is brought to you by pick my kid pick my kid is an automated dismissal solution that cuts car line time in half It engages parents with the parent app by being able to change dismissal routines right from their phone. Friends, that means no more front office calls. Pick My Kid is affordable for schools and removes dismissal stress for parents, teachers, and staff. For more information, visit pickmykid.com. That's P-I-K, mykid.com. On Education is brought to you by Taylor Ed. As teachers, meeting the needs of each and every student in today's classroom is time-consuming, complicated, and overwhelming. TaylorEd makes differentiation in math effortless through curated resources, smart student grouping, and student insights beyond proficiency. Sign up today using the promo code ONEDUCATION and receive three months on us. Visit taylor-ed.com for more information. All right, welcome back to the podcast, friends. Our friend Brad Schreffler, and we've both been on his podcast, and we actually owe him. We, we're planning on bringing him on our podcast real soon because he's pretty awesome, he dude. He's amazing. He posted a pretty awesome tweet, and this just came up today, so we're kind of doing this spur of the moment, but it was such a damn good question that I don't think I could resist it. He basically wanted to know why we're doing our podcast not us specifically he asked all educational podcasters he said what is the goal of your podcast not just your why for doing it but what are you trying to accomplish and he also wanted to know you know if the audience if you who are listening are aware of our goal as in if someone listens to the show um would they know what we're actually trying to do here. Yeah. So I thought it was worth talking about. It's, it seems like a pretty interesting conversation. And to be honest, I'm not a hundred percent sure, at least right now, whether, you know, you and I think the exact same way about this, which is, which is interesting. I've put some of my thoughts down because I have been thinking about it most of the day, but I'm super interested in, what you think or how you are going to um, verbalize your ideas about this as well. So I'm going to, I'll kick it off. Sure. Go ahead. I think that, you know, there are, there are a couple things and I don't know how I'm going to get them all out. But the first thing I'll say is I think that there are, are important topics, important conversations in education that we aren't having. Absolutely. At least not like, in large scale like there are lots of little subgroups talking about stuff but not big broad conversations and i'd like to help facilitate or kickstart some of those conversations they don't need to 
we don't need to come to a consensus. I'm, we know this about me at this point that I don't need everyone to agree and I don't need you to agree with me and I don't need anyone to agree. I really just want the conversation. I want people to talk. And the problem is, is that in a lot of cases we're too afraid of even talking. Yeah, we're too true. afraid of just having the conversation at all. Um, so I mean, my intent on the podcast is not to be converse, um, controversial on purpose. I'm not, you know, I am not contrary to, you know, what we joke about being hot takey to be <laughs> hot takey, uh, even though I find that a little bit fun sometimes. Um, but I'm not afraid to talk about things like social justice or school funding or racism or you know, segregation, we've talked about self segregation, and you know, how all of those things intersect. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in intersectionality. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that all of this stuff matters, it matters at like the macro level, like the big picture, which is why we talk about things like elections. But it, it, it matters at like the micro level, with how you deal with your students in the classroom. This stuff matters, and I want to have those conversations. So I think that that's, at least to kick this off, I think that that's, for me, the first thing I wanted to bring up. Yeah, and I would say I'm right with you on, on every single one of those things. And, and for me, it was kind of like the next evolution of what my goal was on Twitter, which is basically I wanted to make sure that teacher and educator voices were being amplified and that uh, if in a weird way there's a lot of noise out there uh yeah that's sure uh is. garbage and it's all uh, directed against teachers and teaching and educators and educational systems and public education uh, all these things are out there and have been out there um and i, I want to make sure that our noise is competitive it's as loud and that we're proud of what we're doing in our classrooms mm -hmm. and that we're able to share those ideas and then to basically to to build this kind of community and that has actually happened too not only with obviously you know twitter or social networking but then this podcast has created its own uh, community and it's continuing to grow and really that's for me my ultimate goal is for us to know that we have each other's back we don't always agree on every single kind of topic. This is exactly what Mike has talked about. Um, but we do know that we have something inherently that brings us all together. And that's that we're all educators. We're all wanting to do the best we can for our students. And sometimes, uh, actually a lot of times, uh, this position of being an educator is, as someone posted on Twitter, it's inherently political. Mm -hmm. And we want to... Uh, I think we've always been told, at least when I was kind of beginning my career, to stay out of the politics, uh, you know, keep your mouth shut, um, and just put your head down and just grind through the years, you know, those kinds of things. And that's the, the exact opposite of what we should be spreading as far as the message uh -huh. to all of our educators that are coming into the profession, the the, prof the professionals that are working right now, whether it's your your first or second year or your 25th year. We want your voices out there and heard because you're super important and you matter and people need to know actually what's truly happening within our schools, not the perceptions or the uh, misnomers that are being spread out there. So that's my big uh, and most important takeaway as far as what is the, the point of this podcast. It's that. And I think we've done a really good job of tackling a bunch of things that other people don't want to talk about. Yeah. And actually, and also, and and in showing our differences between us, and not being afraid that there's differences even within, uh, though we might be politically on the same side of the you know fence or whatever it might be, that there's still all these disagreements is totally fine because that's mm -hmm. being human and and mm -hmm. and having different experiences, but being able to share those experiences then with our audience, and I love the dichotomy between being able to learn from what's happening uh, with our Canadian educators and our Canadian ed educational systems and that our Canadian uh, listeners can listen to what's happening in the United States and we can learn from each other and, and basically bring all of us up, you know, and all in the benefit, again, 
for of our students, you know, what's best for our students. And that's what we are all here for. And and that's what this show, I think, really centers around. Uh, so I'm really proud of all of the work that we've done thus far. And it's only been a year. I mean, a little over a year, but, you know, a year. Yeah, but a year, but a year and a half. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I'm going to I'm going to mention one of the other points that that I have here. And that's that, um, you know, one of the things that we always said we wanted to do was connect people. Um, and you know, you're American and I'm Canadian yes. and everything that we're doing like now, but also th when we have ideas and when I talk about the things that are like goals for the future and ideas for things that we want to do as we move forward, it's all about bringing people together even more. Yes. And, and what makes that so interesting and so potentially dynamic is this idea that we have Canadians and Americans and these people can now be brought together in, in a community so that we can learn from each other and understand each other's differences and the way that we operate and maybe, um, you know, help each other learn and grow and yes. reflect. And so, you know, I think to answer um, Brad's question about our audience being aware of our goal, I, I honestly think so. I mean, we make it pretty explicit that we've always wanted to connect people. I think that we do a lot of things that signal that, things like the chat. Like, I don't know many other podcasts that are doing a Twitter chat, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, and we're yeah. doing that. And we're doing that because we want people to talk to each other. And um, we are working on some other things. I actually am super pumped about releasing all of our old podcasts on YouTube. Yes. Just as audio. So so like there's there's a, a thumbnail picture, but it's basically just the audio file on YouTube. But what YouTube facilitates that's a little bit different than the straight up podcast medium is conversation. So hopefully, you know, we facilitate some conversations, some communication, some collaboration in the comments section of mm. YouTube where people are listening to the podcast and talking to each other. I would love that. That's yeah. like one of the great goals of putting all of that content that we have, which is, I mean, dude, we're almost 100 episodes now <laughs> uh, on YouTube is that there's going to be 100 episodes, over 100 hours worth of content. Uh, on YouTube for people to talk about and collaborate and communicate. And I think that all of the things we do signal to that kind of collectivization. We're trying to get people together to communicate with each other. Yeah, I think that the biggest, one of the, the biggest rewards, I think, from uh, having done this is when we go to conferences, the reason why we even talk a lot about going to conferences is uh, being able to to meet face-to-face -face with a bunch of the people that uh, we've mm -hmm. talked on the podcast uh, with, you know, whether they be guests or also be able to meet up with the people who have actually do listen to the podcast on a consistent basis and meet them face to face also and get an opportunity to thank them and then mm -hmm. get to hear what they think about, you know, like what are their favorite parts of the show and those kinds of things. And really one of the things that was interesting to me was that people's favorite part of of our podcast or a lot of people's favorite part is just our uh, being human you know like talking mm -hmm. about the things that we're interested in you know at the beginning part of the show when we do our our takes and kind of the back and forth uh of what's happening in our lives and the funniness that comes up uh, just from just being people you know not just talking specifically shop but just being people and and that's awesome because that just shows how much closer of a, of a of a community we can build and it's an amazing opportunity that we have to be able to do what we're doing right now people are into the talk about eye twitches and video games <laughs> yes. i guess my eye is twitching <laughs> It still is. It won't stop, man. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, and, and maybe we can kind of close on this, is I love sharing what smart people are doing. Um, I actually... Yes. It, one of my like lines that I say all of the time is I love listening to smart people talk about smart things. 
and that sounds kind of dumb the way I phrase that, but and and I mostly say it in relation to listening to people lecture. I'm a fan of university lecture style teaching. Like I love sitting and listening to someone talk about the thing that they are like an absolute master of. Mm. And one of the great privileges of hosting a podcast, especially a popular one where we can get on, you know, almost anyone that we want. Amazing people. Is that we're talking to the best teachers on the planet all of the time. Like every episode is someone that has a an amazing, unique, super brilliant perspective. Like you're going to listen to Lenny Shad, who, I mean, we taught when we intro him, you know, it says he's the whatever, whatever FSTC co-chair. We had an amazing conversation about the complexities of deploying one-to-one Devices. devices in the classroom. Yeah. And that's an important thing to talk about. And Big that time. guy's an expert at it. He knows exactly how to do that. He was the um, chief innovation or chief IT person in Houston, in the Houston School yeah. Board. I mean, that's a big job. Oh, my God, yeah. And he's a pro. So, you know, you should listen to that, by the way. Stick around. <laughs> but that's just an example of what I'm talking about, listening to these amazing people talk about what they're passionate about and doing it in a way that is better than almost anyone else in the world is probably, it might not be like why we do this, but it is an amazing privilege and benefit. And all that I hope and pray is that people who are listening to the podcast can just grab a little bit of that even. Yeah. And get, in, they can just, get inspired. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do when I, when I listen to, these people live as we as we get to interview them you leave with this like fulfillment you're like man we're doing amazing things in education and then now we get to share this interview with other people and and talk about like these great stories these great innovations like you just talked about and then be able to go ahead and continue to grow this audience and then get their input and their ideas whether it be on the chat or in comments or or messages to us uh and we're all open to that, which it's it's just been a great ride, and I I can't wait to see what ends up you know what ends up happening next because I mean it's been awesome, and if we continue on this path, it's just continuing to be even bigger and better. Lots of lots of cool ideas, and again, it's all it's all about trying to bring people together and and learn and grow together. When we come back, I spoke to Lenny Shad the co-chair of the FETC program committee, and we'll have that next, so stay with us. On Education is brought to you by FreshGrade. Are you spending too much time stumbling between apps and duplicating work? Want to spend more time connecting with your students? FreshGrade Next has powerful new lesson planning tools that give you the flexibility you need to focus on engaging and inspiring your students. FreshGrade Next is designed for teachers and made for learning. Integrated, simple, and powerful. To learn more about FreshGrade Next and sign up for your free account, visit FreshGrade.com. All right, welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Lenny Shad is the Chief Innovation and Information Officer for District Administration Magazine, and he's the co-chair of the FETC Program Committee. Uh, we had a blast at last year's conference, and we're pretty pumped to talk about FETC and learn a little bit more about what they have in store for attendees at this year's event. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Lenny. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited for FETC 2020 as well. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, so let's get the easy stuff out of the way. This is this is something that comes up every once in a while. It's in Miami this year uh, and not in Orlando. Um, can you give us kind of the lowdown on, on, on the change, I guess? And I'm pretty excited to go to Miami, I won't lie. Uh, but definitely a lot of people are used to it being in Orlando, right? Yeah, it, it is. And it's a, we're excited to have it in Miami. Miami, uh, the venue that we're having it at is, is under renovation or has been under renovation. And so they're going to complete that. So we're excited to be going into a brand new facility. Great conference nice. location. 
Uh, and so they'll have the, the same experience that we saw in Orlando. And I think uh, in the upcoming years, you're going to potentially see FETC move around the country a little bit. You know, it, it's it's branded as a national conference. And mm-hmm. and I think you're going to see in the upcoming years us moving around the U.S., you know, trying to help get some brand recognition that we're just not a Florida conference. We're a national conference. So we're excited, but I think you'll see some movement in the upcoming years. Yeah, I think a lot of people would actually like that quite a bit, um, uh, for sure. Uh, it's So for us, for our podcast, our kind of coming out party was last year's FETC. It was a big deal for us, and it was it's definitely become our favorite conference to go to. Um, and I think that sentiment is shared uh, among a lot of other people as well. Um, what do you think it is about FETC that so many people love? Why so many people love coming to this event specifically and keep coming back? Because it's become huge and people tell each other about it and say, you got to, if you're going to go to anything, go to FETC. Is there, is there, what's the secret sauce, man? What do you think, what do you think it is about it that, that people just keep coming back to it? It can't, it can't just be, it can't just be Florida, right? No, you know, while while the weather in Florida in January is attractive for a lot of people across the country, you know, I think it's I think it's the structure we put together for the program. FETC provides professional development for every role in the district, whether you're an administrator, a superintendent, technology, um, librarians. This year we're adding a new track for technical coaches. Uh, down all the way down to the the classroom teacher. So I think FETC is a great way, uh, no matter what your role is in a school system, to come see not only what's best practices today, but really get a feel for what's coming down the road. And I think we do a really good job of helping people understand in the near term here are things that we think are really going to impact the classroom. And I think that's the draw. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, the, always the, the speakers and keynoters and, and all of those folks that are involved in it. Uh, and we've been thrilled to be involved in FETC. Uh, they're always great. So let's actually talk about some of the speakers a little bit. Let's talk about the keynotes first. If people don't know and don't kind of aren't following FETC on Twitter and haven't seen any of the big announcement. Let's let's talk about who are the the main uh, keynote speakers this year at the conference. Well, we're we're really excited. Um, we were able to get Daniel Pink to come in. You know, a very recognized uh, author, and you know he's been on commentary on TV. So we're really pleased to have him. We have Adam Bello coming in, Justin Schaefer, Hal Davidson. Kathy Schrock, Leslie Fisher, uh, you know, just a real strong group of people who can come in, uh, inspire our attendees to really be excited about the job that they do, uh, cause it's not an easy job. And so I, I think we have a really good lineup to set the tone, uh, and continue the really strong message of, you know, this is an exciting time to be in public education and we all should be learning from each other. For sure. Uh, folks, if you're listening and you don't know who Daniel Pink is, go search on YouTube for his TED Talk on the science of motivation. It's actually one of the 10 most watched TED Talks in all mm-hmm. ta- of all time. Uh, over like 20 million views this guy has on this on this TED Talk. Like if, if you're looking for like a top tier speaker, I mean, FETC's really nailed it. This guy is uh, the real the real deal. And I think when you're talking about inspiring people, uh, people are, I think going to leave really pumped up after, after listening to Daniel for sure. Yeah. I can't think of a better way to kick off our conference. He's, you know, he's charismatic, he's dynamic. Uh, and, and I think his message is just so relevant to everybody in the room. And that's what we really look for with the keynote speaker is, you know, we don't want it to just hit a portion of our audience and our attendees. We want it to be relevant for everyone in the room. And, and uh, Daniel Pink, his messaging and and just his persona on stage is, is a great way to kick our conference off. 
Absolutely. Uh, and obviously, there are On quite a few other to featured by speakers Grade. coming to FTTC. Are you spending FTTC. too much time stumbling buddy Brian between apps Aspinall and duplicating is, work? Is heading down there Want to spend more time connecting with your students? And you have a whole Fresh Grade Next host of others. Uh, and your main focus, that give you the Lenny, is in the IT track. To focus track. on so engaging tell us and inspiring your students. Who you specifically Fresh Grade Next is designed for have, teachers uh, and made for learning. Uh, to bring into the Integrated, conference. simple, and Yeah, I'm really excited about the responsibility for the the, 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 the technology Grade. track for FETC. Um, I think it's just such an opportunity to provide some really tactical hands-on, you know, if you're if you're an administrator or in a support role here, we're going to give you some real technical information. But then we also want to provide some, some really strong professional development on leadership because the, the, the right. role of the CIO in K-12 today is is changing and it is changing quickly. And so what what we want to do is provide some some really good speakers to come in and talk about that. We have uh, Dr. Tom Ryan, who is the past COSIN chair. Uh, he's coming in and, and he'll be speaking about um, you know what it means to be a strategic thinker. We have uh, Melissa Dodd, who is the CIO from San Francisco Unified. Uh, she's going to come in and talk about project management and organizational change management, which is such a key element when you're trying to do big change in a school system. Uh, yeah. We have Marlo Gaddis. She's for Way County. Uh, and she's going to come in and talk about how do you build a culture uh, and then some digital equity. Uh, Mark Racine from Boston. He is the CIO from Boston. Uh, he's become nationally recognized for cybersecurity and the work he does around that. Lori Owens from, from CETA is going to come in and talk about transformational leadership. Uh, we have uh, Cheryl Abishire, who has been the retired uh, CIO for Calcasieu County. She has a, a breadth of experience. She's going to come in and talk a little bit about E-rate. Uh, and, and then we have uh, Kevin Schwartz from Austin ISD. Uh, he's been very successful in deploying one-to-one, -one, so we're going to have some strategies around that. So a really, really strong lineup, uh, and we're just excited that they're going to come in and, and provide some leadership around um, around the, the strategy of the CIO. Then we're going to have some really boxes and wires topics. We're going to have yeah, yeah. things about network administration and Google administration and, you know, how do you use... Um, you know, this, these online content providers. We're going to have stuff for independent school systems because they have unique challenges compared to, to big public schools. So, you know, we really do have a lot to offer no matter what your role is in technology. Come in and, and we're going to have some experts really sharing their, their experience. The wild thing is, is that, I mean, our listeners, we have a, a lot of varied listeners from uh, instructional coaches to obviously classroom teachers, um, but we also have a good um, a good chunk of administrators. And um, we talk a lot on the podcast about how hard it is to like one-to-one -one is not easy. It sounds great. Let's hand everybody iPads and, and rock and roll. But, I mean, it's not that easy. And actually, it's incredibly complicated. Um, we actually um, spent some time talking to Diana McGee uh, last year on the uh, in advance of FETC and, and talking about how vetting ed tech is actually really, really hard to do. Uh -huh. And I love that you have a whole track, a whole subsection of a conference to help kind of right this ship because I tell you, it's it's – not as easy as it sounds. Even picking the right apps is incredibly complex. And I, I actually tell the story all the time of I worked at a private school and we went one to one. And then we realized that uh, the bandwidth in our school wasn't wasn't big enough. That we didn't have enough space to handle all the apps. And it was just like we did not have the foresight to think about that stuff. And that's just one mm -hmm. of the many complexities of this. So I am, you know, I, I really think that this is a valuable service that uh, that you're bringing in these people to help help guide. Yeah, you know, and, and I think the thing is, is it, it was just, you know, eight months ago that I was the CIO for Houston ISD. So I haven't been out of the chair long. Sure. Yeah. And so, you know, you, I, I really tried to put myself in the position of an attendee to say what would draw me. Right. 
And, and what I looked for is I wanted to increase my breadth and depth of my personal network, meet colleagues, right, that I can learn from. And I yeah. wanted to be challenged on what am I thinking and am I thinking of it in the right way? You know, one of the, the featured speakers we have is Dr. Ken Thompson from uh, San Antonio, and he's going to come in and talk about the landscape of ERP systems and student information systems, because <laughs> those are changing quickly and those are the bread and butter of a school system. So, sure, yeah. you, you know, it's 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 going to be a real opportunity. You know, we're hoping that districts and IT people will bring their teams here because there's going to this will be a great mm-hmm. opportunity mm-hmm. to learn and plan together as a leadership team as you're attending, you know, topics like organizational change management uh, that deals with the emotional side of these changes that we're talking about. And it's what makes or break projects. You know, the technology is complex, but I argue it's the easiest part of these transformation equations, right? Um, and it's really figuring out how you get people to buy into and become emotionally co- uh, comfortable. That's what organizational change management is. And we have a number of sessions on that. So really excited about the track. It's awesome. It's, and I was just thinking while you're talking, it's not it's not the sexiest stuff in the world. It's not the stuff that gets you, you know, edgy Twitter celebrity, 150,000 followers and all of that nonsense that 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 is a thing. But I'll tell you, it's, you know, it's the backbone of of all of the stuff that we like. You cannot be successful doing one to one and then, you know, keynoting on how awesome your cool, inclusive student voice one to one program is. If you have a really crappy, you know, system to actually manage it, you will never be successful. Like it, it starts at the bottom, at like at the roots of this. And uh, you know, I think it's you're... super important. You're exactly right. If you don't have a strong infrastructure foundation from a technology perspective, it's a house of cards. And, you know, you can try and add and innovate and it's just going to continue to fail. So, you know, what we really want are these IT leaders to understand you have to build your foundation first and then you can transform and you can innovate. It can't be in any other order than that. And actually, I think it's very important for superintendents to understand that because, you know, they tend to focus on here's what I want to do, go make it happen. And they put a lot of pressure on people to do projects that don't have realistic timelines. And so, you know, one of the things we have in the administrator track is helping superintendents understand you need to stop doing your strategic planning in silos, but you need to come together as a system and figure out where each current state is for the organization and then lay your, your vision out. So help them be more realistic about what they're planning. And so, you know, again, this is a comprehensive from top to bottom opportunity to come together and really learn what it means to lead K-12 public education in this very dynamic transformational time. Amazing. So we are... Obviously, this is the kickoff for On Education. We're gearing up to talk to a whole bunch of folks um, as we get closer to December. Passes uh, for FETC are obviously still available, but there is a huge discount available uh, now until November 1st. And then there's uh, even more early bird discounts available until December 6th. So we want to really encourage people to get on that if they're uh, thinking about heading to Florida um, in December. And who wants, who doesn't want to go to Florida in December? Uh, I I will for sure because I get about six feet of snow, Lenny, in my front yard. So uh, <laughs> then it's the I'm place like... to be in January. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm the I'm in the center of lake effect snow up here. So oh man, uh, you know I'm I'm all about it. Um, Lenny, where can people go to learn more about FETC and to register? You bet. It's at www.fetc.org. If you go there, you can learn more about our keynote speakers. You can see a little bit about uh, what we have coming up. Uh, And it has a register button. And and as you said, if you register now, you have an opportunity to get $150 savings. So uh, everybody that you're interested in in coming to Florida in January, please go to fetc.org and get yourself registered. It's going to be a great event. Amazing. Lenny Shad, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to On Education. My name is Glenn Irvin. My co-host is Mike Washburn. On Education is part of the Education Podcast Network. 
You can listen to this show and many others by great educators like Jennifer Gonzalez, Matt Miller, and many more by visiting edupodcastnetwork.com. Want to get in touch with us? Check out our website at oneducationpodcast.com. You can tweet us at oneducationpod. Mike is at Mr. Washburn on Twitter, and I can be found at Irv Spanish. You can find us on Facebook by visiting facebook.com slash oneducationpod. We're also on Instagram at oneducationpod. If you're enjoying the show and think others would too, we would be thrilled if you shared it with them. Please leave us a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or the Google Play Store. When you leave a rating, it gives our rankings a boost. This helps others discover the show. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Classcraft, for supporting us. Check out classcraft.com slash oneducation to learn more about them. Thanks as always for listening. Stay awesome and see you soon.